Hi felters and welcome. Why do your needles keep breaking? Let's try and work out why. My name is Philippa and I'm a needle felting artist. I've been doing this for about six or seven years and I'm here to help you. So number one, the main reason why needles break is because they are low quality needles. You need a high carbon mix with stainless steel for a good quality needle. Uh, ways in which you can sort of tell is if you bought your needles in large amounts, say you bought 20 or 30 or 40 of the same type of needle, um, if they arrived and they had a bit of rust on them or if they rusted quite quickly and if they arrived and they had oil on them. Those are sort of common ways in which you can tell. But also if you keep breaking quite a few needles, say each week you broke two or three needles, I believe that is too many needles. So it's probably the quality of the needles. You need a high carbon steel mix with stainless steel. Now, when you buy needles, no one tells you what your carbon steel mix is. So you need to go to a dedicated felting shop. I use Heidi Feathers. If you follow me, you'll probably know, but you've got uh, Living Felt, Serafina Fiber Art. There's lots of other places. So make sure that shop is dedicated and you'll normally find those places have got color coded needles that really, really help you. I don't really prefer when they label them small, medium, large, but they're still, some of them are still probably good quality needles. I prefer to see the type of needle, whether it's triangular spiral and what size it is, uh, 32, 36, you know, 38. I find that a lot easier and I've got lots of videos explaining needles. So go to a dedicated needle felting shop is probably your best way to get good quality needles. And saying that, 80p to a pound for a needle, it's not that expensive if you spent five pounds on five needles. I think, you know, that is perfectly okay for a new craft and they'll probably last you quite a long time. Next, um, it could be the action in which you're using that is causing it. Um, they always say, you know, go in at the same angle and pull the needle out at the same angle. I think most of us do do that and are conscious of that, but um, obviously in, out, same angle, but try not to stab too deeply. It's a gentle tap, tap, tap. The needle goes in quite far, even with a gentle tap, tap, tap. So you could be pushing it in. You could be being slightly too uh, forceful or aggressive for the needle. So it is the action in which you use. Just be a little bit careful. Hold the needle lightly as well. Always have something underneath your needle felting so that you are not hitting the table. If your needle hits a hard surface, it will ping and break. And it's really annoying if that end of that needle pings, you've got to find it. So always have, you could have a foam mat, you could have a felt mat, which is stuffed with wool. You can have a burlap mat with rice in it. You can have a wool mat. There's loads of different mats for all different budgets. Always have something underneath and your needle needs to be able to penetrate it. I bought a felt ironing mat once, just sort of, I was doing trials and stuff and that was so hard the needle could not penetrate it. So even though it was a felt mat, it was a thick solid one, it wasn't good because the needle would still hit it and not go in. Needles don't really get too old and mine don't really go blunt. I've literally had probably only one or two needles that have gone blunt in the lifetime, in the seven years I've been doing this. Normally, I'm more likely to break a needle than I am for it to go blunt or to get too old. But that comes back to buying good quality needles that don't deteriorate over time. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention about buying needles is the colours. It's not universal across everywhere. It's different and specific to each shop. So make sure you keep the code that they send with them. And normally, good uh, needle felting shops will have the needles all coded. When you're felting an item and... Um, you're trying to do the top of it, don't move this hand up to the top, turn your item round. I try and keep this hand with the needle in it always at this angle, always up and down there and I do a lot of turning or moving it round on the mat with this hand. That way you don't end up moving up further up and then maybe dragging it down by accident and causing it to snap. So turn your work and keep this hand in the constant place. They do say trying to keep the needle at at 90 degrees to the surface it's not you don't always have to and quite a lot of the time when you're trying to get a smooth finish you'll move that angle down to at least 45 and that will help you with the finer needles 
but definitely keeping this needle and this hand in this sort of range and area and moving your work will, will prevent you from bending the needle. Along with that, when you're trying to do lines, like say I'm trying to do the line around a hoof and I'm taking my needle and I drag the wool a little bit, always use a thicker needle for that. You can feel fine needles literally sort of bend as you do it and you're like, oh, it's gonna break. So use a thicker needle if you're dragging or drawing any lines in your work. I'm just editing this and one thing I forgot to mention and I want to put it in there is you might be using the wrong needle for the wrong stage of your project. So when you first start your project, if you used a fine needle um, with a load of coarse wool, number one, it's not going to do much work and it's not going to bring all the wool together, but it's going to struggle as well. And contrary to that, on the other side of things, if you're using a thick needle and you've felted something quite thoroughly, um, it's not going to go in. You, as you're felting, you'll discover you start to feel that the needle has resistance and you think, mm, I need to go to a finer needle now. So you'll start to get that feeling. So you might be using the wrong needle for the wrong stage of your project. Always bear in mind that it should be easy to be able to put the needle in and out. There shouldn't be too much resistance. So as I said, it comes back to the gentle you know, tapping in rather than having to force a needle in. Wire armature, this is definitely the area where you're probably likely to break your needle. And I break a needle at least once every two months. Um, so wrap the wool tightly around it. Always use a thicker needle when you're starting with the wire armature. Hold the needle lightly, let it bounce off the wire or bounce around the wire and just be really, really gentle. Um, once you get a layer of about that much, you can start to use a finer needle if you need it at that stage. But always start with a bigger, thicker needle and nice and light. And around the backs of eyes as well, sometimes you might catch uh, the back of it and that might cause the needle to break. So if um, a needle does snap, uh, you, I personally have to find that end of that needle. Um, I have lost some tips in my big, thick wool mat and then eventually I replace it. But if it's in a creation, obviously if I'm selling a creation, I have to find it. That might involve literally cutting into the creation to get it out. But if you're gonna give that creation away, you're gonna to have to find it. Um, if it's for yourself, that's fine. Just don't make sure you, know, you don't have any children that end up playing with it because it's still a sharp tip, probably about that big. If it pings off in the room, which I've had happen before, Again, I have to find it because I have dogs. I found it up on the top of my shelves, just up there. I found a little tiny needle tip. So yeah, if that happens, you have to find it. People try and use magnets. It doesn't always work. I just get a thicker needle and I sort of start gently stabbing in until I can feel it and then I cut it out. If your needles are just uh, sitting on the side and they fall and hit um, a hard surface or a hard floor, they could break as well. So do store your needles correctly. If they come in those thick tubes, keep them in those thick tubes. I keep my needles in some wool, the ones that I use an awful lot, or I keep them in the corner of my mat. Um, that way there's a bit of lanolin in it on them, but I've never had needles that have rusted here. Only I bought a cheap set for a, a, an experiment I was doing for a video and they arrived rusted. So <laughs> if you keep the tubes so that when they do break, then you can put the um, broken needles and the tips in those tubes and dispose of them that way safely. They're not regarded as sharp items as far as I'm aware in the UK, but you know, they are sharp. Let's use our common sense, maybe a glass jar with a lid. That would work really well or you could go to your chemist and get a sharps disposal i've heard people do that i've never done it myself so there we go we've covered everything i would say the number one reason why your needles are breaking is probably the quality of the needles and you know wire armature and that's just experience and time that you'll get better at it so any questions pop them in the comments below thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon take care